let's get started. Um, I want to talk about uh, coloring, coloring a comic book, and specifically I want to talk about uh, the particular things that I do uh, in coloring Green Monk uh, and the decisions that I make. So this isn't going to be a general how to color comics uh, type of a present presentation. Um, if you want kind of some of those more general guidelines about coloring comics, I think there's there's probably other places to go. Uh, in particular, I'm not really going to go over flatting, even though I do have um, color assistants who um, help with the flatting um, and help with some of the, the color choices too. Um, I'm not really going to go over that just because that's you can find that that anywhere. And, and I've actually had my assistants take different approaches to flatting and you know any approach to flatting will work with with what I'm doing. So uh, kind of my strategic uh, reasons behind how I color uh, in this comic is that I want to have a really high quality look that uh, involves as little um, little time as possible on my part. Um, and the the ways I do this are you know first and foremost. If you want a high quality end product with minimal work, the very, very first thing you have to focus on is having good design. Things need to be well designed. You need good composition. And then the second part of this is having a good palette. So a good base palette. That just means the flat colors. And really, um, my color approach on Green Monk excuse me, is really mostly a flat color approach that I then dress up in some other ways. So start with good design, start with good colors, and that's going to save you a lot of work. You can get away with doing a lot less if you start with those two things. If you start with other uh, kind of a garish palette, if your design isn't weak, then a lot of times you end up having to do a lot of things to try to dress that up. You put in a lot of work to try to make... Um, bad choices at the beginning, you know, look better um, with doing all sorts of rendering and other other effects. So um, the rest of the effect for me, the rest of what makes this coloring approach work is using some techniques and tools that are going to give a little bit of variety uh, in the color and help to emphasize um, things here and there. So the other tools I use are things like vignetting, gradients, um, texture, uh, color holds, and what I will call like strategic lighting effects. So some of these things I will be able to explain uh, pretty well. Uh, some of these things are, are going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to try to go over the stuff that I think is pretty digestible and, and easy to get. So. Um, one thing I'm doing to, to save a lot of time, just right up front, I'll, I'll get back to this later, but one thing I'm doing to save time is I'm not really doing any rendering. I'm not trying to turn a comic book into a painted uh, image. And I'm even I'm even trying not to get it like a tune shaded. I'm not doing any tune shading either. Tune shading is basically where you have like two tones. You'll have a, a kind of local color and then you'll have like a shade color. And I, I do some, I do very, a little bit of that rendering, a little bit of... of what you might call tune shading, but it's very minimal. I don't really have to do that much. And the reason is is that it's it's time intensive. So rendering is time intensive. Even tune shading is intensive. Um, I want to do as little work as possible on this. Um, and sometimes you just you don't even necessarily get a benefit from it. So I want to put things in here that are going to make a difference, that are going to make, make this stuff stand out. And at the end of the day, I still believe that comics are about line work. I want to emphasize the line work. I want to emphasize the ink work that I'm done. So I really try to use color in such a way that it's going to emphasize the um, the line work and the ink work that I've done. So um, first, I want to talk about uh, vignetting, uh, gradients, and texture. So they, these are three kind of techniques and concepts that are all um, kind of connected. Um, the texture does add a little bit of variation to the surface of things, uh, which helps give things a little bit more depth. Um, but I, I don't intentionally use 
texture um, as a tool to add color variation. The reason and the ways in which I use texture, I really try to conceptualize it in the same way that I would use a gradient. So I want to start by talking about how I use gradients, um, how I use vignettes, and then I can kind of demonstrate uh, how I might apply it. Uh, so, you know, a gradient is really just a gradual change from one color to the other. Um, and let me show an example of this. So I, my, one of my coloring assistants, Hannah, um, has prepared a page for me. This is a page I, I formerly had done in, in black and white. And um, she's gone in and, and added some color to it. And she's added some gradients to things. So you can see in the sky, there is a gradient in this sky area. And so a gradient is just an area that goes from one color to the other or from light to dark. And in general, the way that I like to use gradients is to uh, draw attention to the point of focus. So in general, I'll go dark to light from bottom to top. So let me just see if I can show some examples of this. Um, so this is a good example. I'm going to zoom in on some, th some things here. So on my main character, Alexi, you can see right here on his robe that it is going from darker on the bottom to lighter towards the top. Same in the hair. It's, it's, it's subtle, but it is there. On his, on his robe again here, it's darker on the bottom, lighter towards the top. You can see the same effect in the hair. Darker towards the bottom, lighter towards the top. You can see a gradient behind him as well. It's darker at the bottom, lighter towards the top. So, um, and you can see some other examples here as well. This guy's fur cloak, his beard has a gradient on it. Um, same thing on the cloak here, the robe here again of, of Alexi goes from dark to light. So it's, it's a tool of focus. I want to go from dark on the bottom to light more towards the top to bring focus to, to the face. Um, and vignetting is, is really a, a similar concept. Um, let me find a good example of vignetting. You can see uh, vignetting okay right here. Vignetting just really means you darken the edges. The edges are darker um, than the center. It's the same idea. It's about drawing your attention um, to the center. Um, the one kind of difference between vignetting and, and use of gradients is I apply gradients to interior shapes. So again, you can see on this robe on Alexi that it's dark on the shape of the robe and dark to light on that shape of that robe. The vignetting, however, goes on top kind of on top of the whole scene. So I'm even go on top of the line work and, and do an airbrush, a dark airbrush with a multiply on top of the line work and the color that will, will create that vignette. Maybe it'll, it'll be texture, but usually it'll just be kind of an airbrush. So let me show you how I might directly apply some of these effects. So again, here's this image uh, that Hannah helped put together. Um, I'm turn off this layer with color holds. Um, and so there's already this um, gradient in this background sky area. So and I just want to show you what area, just call it out so I can make really clear um, what area I'm looking at. All right, I'm looking at this area here inside the red. That's the area I'm looking at right now. So we've got a gradient going from dark to light from the edge of the panel to the center of the panel. And I want to add some texture to this. And I have, there are two ways that I can add texture to this shape. Um, one is that I can use the gradient that's already here and kind of just add some more texture into it so I can start with a gradient and add more texture to that. Or I can go the other direction and start with texture and then kind of smooth out the texture just so it has more of a gradient-y um, feeling. So I'm going to start uh, with actually this background shape is, is a flat color. So I'm going to go in here and fill this. Uh, I'm just going to create uh, a new layer, lock it to transparency, which just means I'm going to hold option and hold my cursor between the two layers. And I get this little indentation, which just means that the transparency is locked. I'm going to fill that layer with a dark blue. And now we've got just a single shape. So now I'm going to, actually, I want to do this in the 
with the other color. So I'm going to start with a lighter color. Since I, I, I prefer, whoops, I prefer to start with a lighter color and then work in the darker colors from there. So let's let's look at how I might use texture then to create a gradient. I'm going to create another layer. Again, I'm going to indent this layer, lock it to transparency on the layer below. Then I'm going to choose a texture brush. I have, uh, I think, five different texture brushes that I, I made out of another uh, brush pack that I got. I kind of use them all. I just pick them at random um, and use them. And uh, I'll try to figure out, I'll, I'll put these together and I, I'll, I'll find some way that I can give them away because they're, they're made from, I took them from, Hans Bacher has this huge brush set that I got from Art Director way back at my EA days and they're, they're made from his brush set so um, they aren't really my brushes. I haven't built them from scratch so I can't really like sell them or anything but I, I'd be okay with giving them away since I've just modified them slightly for my uses. But anyway... The first thing I'm going to do with the texture brushes to really get the effect I want, since I want this to be more of a gradient feeling um, than a really textury feeling, I want to, the brush to be very large and I want to use the brush as little as possible. I want to retain the actual brush, um, kind of the texture shapes as much as possible. So I've made a really large brush um, right now and I'm just going to kind of, kind of dab it into this area some more times closer towards the edge and then I can even decrease the opacity so I'm just cut down the opacity to 50 percent I can decrease the opacity as I, I get closer to the middle and then I might go back and reinforce this edge a little bit so the idea is is kind of that of, of a gradient um, but I want to reinforce this effect I'd like this to feel a little, little bit more gradienty so I want to kind of smooth this out um, and just create a little bit, just make it more of a subtle effect. So I'm going back over now with an airbrush, a large airbrush, same color, 100%, and I'm gonna just gonna paint in, over that, that texture just a little bit. You know, and now what I can do is I can lower the opacity on my, my texture layer that has just the texture on it. I can even lower the opacity on the airbrush layer a little bit. And I might even make one more pass. I'm gonna get, just make the color a little bit darker and I'm on the airbrush layer again. I'm just going to go, you know, on the edge, closer to the edge of the panel, and a little bit more in. So that's really about all I do with texture. And this goes for, for any shape. Um, let me show you how I might do that now. I want to just do one more example of that um, on this, this monk's robe. So again, I'm going to create a, a layer that I'm going to lock to transparency, new layer, then option, cursor between the layers. And I'm, I'm going on to this monk's robe right here. I'm also just going to select the shape because I think there's some other colors on this layer as well. Um, I'm going to hide uh, Command H to hide the selection. It's still there. I'm going to select the the local color. I'm going to select a color that's slightly darker. This is going to be my texture color. Uh, I'm going to select a texture brush again, make it big, and then just dab a couple spots in here more towards the bottom less towards the top. I can even go down to 50% towards the top. I'm going to go back to 100% and reinforce this bottom a little bit. Um, now I'm going to go to the airbrush. And the same idea, just darken this bottom a little bit more with the airbrush. So you get kind of that gradient feel with a little bit of texture in it. And that's about as much as I'll need for the effect that I want to get. The other thing I could do that I'll often do now is to add a little bit of extra variety. I'm going to grab another texture brush again, make it large. I'm going to select this darker color. Now I want to do another pass just with a little bit of increased saturation to it. So I'm making the color just a little bit more saturated. And this one I'm going to, I'm going to apply even more lightly like two or three, it's not quite showing up. So let me, let me give it a little bit more. And I, you may not be able to see it in the video, but that gives it a little bit of, I'm seeing a little bit of variety that I like there. So first pass, I'm gonna do with a texture brush. It's gonna be just a little bit darker than the local, local color. Um, 
I'm going to apply it more towards the bottom, less towards the top, maybe, you know, 50%, turn down the opacity of the brush to 50% towards the top of the shape. Then I'm going to come back with the airbrush, darken the bottom a little bit with the airbrush, just smooth out that um, gradient effect a little bit. And then last, which is kind of optional, is, is just to get a little bit of a saturated, more saturated version of that darker color and, and just give that a couple more, dab that in in a couple more spots. And that just gives it a little bit of that color variety. So that's kind of how I will paint and texture. Now I mentioned before, I, you, you could also start with a, um, a gradient and then work the texture in. And so in this case, there, the gradient is already in this shape. I'm going to go in and um, select the shape. Is this all on? Okay, I don't need to select it because I think that's all still in one layer. So I already have the gradient there. And so I'm just going to try to paint a little bit of texture into the gradient. Again, I'm going to select this, the darkest color within this gradient, find a gradient brush, and I'm just going to kind of start dabbing towards the lighter color. Then I can go to the lighter color and I go back the other way. So I'm just going from the bottom now up with the lighter color. Um, and you know, I'll probably come back one more time just to kind of knock this down a little bit now that I've got. See, now I've got a little bit of texture in that upper area. I might knock that down just a little bit more. Um, you know, and I can still come in with airbrush as well and, and just smooth out some of these areas. So just come in with a little bit of airbrush, kind of on both ends again. So I'm going to do a little bit of airbrush on the darker end, a little bit on, on the lighter end. So that I get the same thing. I get a kind of just a smoothed out um, texture. But I still, the overall effect is one of, of a gradient, of a subtle gradient. So that's this is the version starting with a gradient and then kind of adding texture in. This is what the version looks like, um, just painting in... Uh, painting in texture from a, a flat color and then kind of adding in a little bit more uh, smoothness with uh, an airbrush. So that's how I apply um, uh, gradients. If I'm going to do a vignette, now, so a vignette now is kind of this darkening of the edges. I'll actually go up above my, my line art. Let's see, where's my line art? Right here. And I'm just going to make select this entire panel and the edges are masked off with white, so I can kind of go outside of the edges a little bit. I'm just going to select a dark color. I can even, even go a little bit darker. Uh, put that on a multiply. I'm going to hide my selection again. Big, big airbrush. And I'm just going to hit this dark airbrush on the edges. And I could do a similar thing that I've been doing before that I could um, I could start with texture and then smooth it out with an airbrush and I can come back into this as well grab one of these texture brushes or choose an eraser yeah, and, and then choose one of these texture brushes um, I'm gonna turn the opacity way down on this like a 30% opacity and just come into this vignetting just a little bit and just put some little bit of texture in it so you can see that that kind of breaks up that vignetting so that vignetting gets a little bit of texture. So that may be a way that I will, will finish up. And it can also help me to avoid, you know, putting texture on some things. I may not have to go in on the snow and add so much texture on that snow. But the vignetting kind of goes on top, helps create that focus in the middle. Um, gradients goes more within the in interior shapes. Um, so, let's see. All right, so now I want to look at, at color holds. Color holds, it's it's the same idea. Again, I'm trying to do as little as possible and get it as the most bang for uh, my buck that I can. And so for me, color holds, I try to uh, limit how and when I use color holds. Uh, there are a couple places where I like to use it. I like to use them on sound effects. Um, I like to use them on kind of more ethereal objects. So things like um, uh, smoke, uh, fire, wind, clouds, um, snow, blood perhaps. And then the last thing I like to use them on is um, uh, like background objects, objects that I want to have some sort of atmosphere to be pushed in the background. 
you know, and this allows that everything in the foreground, I can just leave a black, a black line and everything in the, in the foreground. Those are the things that stand out the most. And it's much easier to figure out kind of the importance of things in the image. If I always leave the most important things in the image with a black outline, um, then I don't have to be trying to balance all these different color holds. And, you know, color holds is another thing that just, it takes a ton of time. If I'm going to add a color hold to every goddamn thing that's colored in the image, that just takes forever. Um, you know, and we're not trying to turn a comic book into a painted piece of art. We're just trying to give it a little bit of color to emphasize things. So I just want to call out some of the areas that I've got color holds going on here. Um, this background um, monastery has color holds on it. Um, these clouds in the background have color holds on them. I have some subtle color holds uh, behind my monk here, behind... Uh, Alexi on the inks in the background to kind of create this glow behind him. There's kind of this dreamlike snake that has a color hold on it. Lots of clouds in here have color holds on them. Uh, let me show some other examples. So I've got this giant in the background. There's color holds on this whole giant. And that's because I've got this little character jumping here with Alexi. I want him to stand out really clearly. So I wanted him to have the black outlines and then this large shape that could really take up a lot of attention. I wanted that to push back into the background a little bit to blend with the background a little bit. So there's a color hold on that whole um, giant character as well. Um, again, the backgrounds here, um, color holds. Let's see if I can see an example of, of sound effects. Blood, this blood on his hand, there's holds. You can see a lot of color holds on the backgrounds. These speed lines here, these speed lines here in the background. Um, and I don't know if I have any sound effects that I can find here. So then here on these areas, here's another example of, of color holds on sound effects. We've got these sound effects as he's like fighting with this plant stuff. Um, just to give the, the sound effects, just to make them feel, you know, not of the world of the comic. Um, some more color holds in the background here, speed lines, a little bit in these glowing effects. You've got some color holds and again on some more speed lines. So that should give you an idea of, of, of where I use color holds. You know, how I apply them is, is pretty simple. It's, it's similar to what I've done with creating um, uh, locking to transparency on some of these other layers. So I actually already went in and, and painted some color holds. On these lines here of snow, you know, I, I just I just create, whoops, I locked that to the layer below it. Let's see. All right, like that, there we go. So I just have a layer, I locked to transparency, and you can just go and paint in. Now that that's locked to my line work, you can just go in and paint where you want. Um, you know, where you want the line art to be colored. That's fairly simple. It's with a solid brush. I don't put textures on my colored holds. Um, you can also go in, once you've painted in the color hold, you can go in and you can do, you know, Command U and use Hue and Saturation. I can saturate that color hold more if I want. Um, I can lighten it, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I can change the color of it. And like I said, color holds, are usually a flat color. Every once in a while, I will do um, like a little bit of a gradient on a color hold. So you can see on this giant's leg, there are holds on the foot. And then just as, as it kind of moves up into the foreground, it becomes a solid black line. So sometimes I, I'll do effects like that. Um, so the last thing, let's see here. The, the last thing that I really do every once in a while is uh, what I just call um, strategic lighting effects. And I say it's strategic lighting effects because I don't use it everywhere. And, uh, you know, I use it very irregularly, but I use it where I feel that the, the need is there, where I just want to kind of call out something uh, or give a little bit more of a dramatic effect. So here's an example of, of sometimes what where I will do some of these dramatic lighting effects. So here on um, the hegemon here, he has uh, just kind of the shading on the side of his face. This is kind of a, a, a tune rendered, a cell rendered uh, type of look. Like I said, I don't do it very often, but there are cases, particularly when I have a point of focus 
that is already heavily rendered in ink, I will use uh, color to um, reinforce that rendering. So you can see here, I've already done a lot of hatching with the ink here, so I'm trying to reinforce that with a little bit of coloring. But I'm not going to do that all the time. I mean, look at the hand. The hand, I haven't done any rendering on the hand. I've just has a little bit of that texture. That's that's all it needs um, to get its effect. But because this is a point of focus, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more stuff in there. Another example of, of where I've done of of this idea of strategic um, lighting is um, this image here. So I have this image where you have this open door, you have this cold winter night, and I have kind of this light spilling out. So this is another area. I wouldn't do this on every page and in every circumstance, but on this page, in this circumstance, to get the effect of kind of this light spilling out, I went in and, and did this rendering. Um, kind of the strategic uh, use of rendering. You know, and, and another case where I might use it is in, and sometimes I have kind of these glowing, glowing objects. So let me find kind of a glowing. So this is an example. You can see there's kind of this glow behind uh, this monk. It's kind of covering. It's not really, really a hold because it's, it's covering the line art and it's covering um, the local color as well. It's kind of to create this glow effect. That's another unusual effect that I'll use every once in a while. Let me show you a couple of other other examples of that. So here's another example of this where it's kind of this green, bluish green light glowing off of these characters here. As you get close to them, you can see that glow as well. It's it's subtle, but the, the glow is co covering um, the line work and the local color. So um, that's kind of an overview of the coloring choices I make. And there's kind of one more thing I want to show you. The last thing I use to really tie everything together is just a, a simple um, texture filter, a simple noise filter. So I want to show you how I create that noise filter and kind of the effect it has. So I wanted to show this image because this kind of shows you what an image looks like before um, I apply uh, this noise filter. So you can see the texture, you can see kind of just the, the flat colors in some places. Let me scroll down here as well. We've got this image, you can kind of see the texture and, and kind of how that works. So what I'm going to do to apply this is I'm going to turn off my inks, all my, my line work that's overlaying the color. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll actually uh, turn off the whites in the background as well because I don't want this applied to the whites. Yeah, so we'll turn that transparent. Um, and then I'm just going to create a new layer. Um, I think this is like Command, Alt, Shift, E. You just create a new layer with, with all the color on it. I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And then I usually have it set to about 7%, between 5 to 10%, but Currently, it's at 7%. You know, you can preview how it's going to look. Then I hit OK. Let's do it. Uh, something is not working there. Let me try that again. OK. That didn't look right. All right, let's try this again. Create the layer again. That is, why is that looking so weird? Oh, because I've got, is that my color holds being funky? That's what it is, my color holds. Okay, let's try that again. All right, sometime, somehow my color holds got mushed in there. All right, so I've got this image here. I've turned off the whites. I've turned off the blacks. I just want the color. I'm going to select filter, noise, add noise. I've got it about 7%. I think between 5 and 10% I like. I hit OK. All right, and there it is. So that's the effect with the noise. And you, you can see how with the noise, it kind of blends in the texture to the local color, to those flat colors. Um, and let me let me turn the line work back on so we can see how it looks with the line work. Because that's really going to give us the full effect. Inks and panel borders. Um, so that's how it looks with the line work. The, the one last thing that I, w I will do after I do um, that noise filter 
Um, I'll just do a, a Gaussian blur. So blur, Gaussian blur, you know, 0.5, it could be even less. I like it to be pretty subtle, but I just want something that's going to take the edge off of that noise filter so it doesn't feel quite so digital looking. So I'm going to try 0.5. I like 0.5. I'll hit OK. And so this is the final effect. Let me show you the before and after. This is the before. This is the after. And so you can see how that kind of grain just ties together the texture and the um, local color, the flat. So you can see this is kind of the final effect, uh, how it ties things together. Again, this is another one of these, these um, tools that just helps you to have you know, a nice look uh, without a, a ton of work. So again, just to kind of reiterate, my whole strategy is to get the best effect with as little work as possible. And I want to reiterate once again before I conclude that the first thing you have to do to make that work is you have to have good design and you have to have good colors. Um, these other additional things just aren't going to help that much if, if you don't start with a, a good base. Um, once you're done, they're, they're, there are these just kind of simple things, these little things you can do just to give a little bit more texture, a little bit more variety, um, and add a little bit of life to the color. But it's, it's really essentially a, a very simple coloring scheme. So those are some of the things that I do to get the look that I want from my comic book. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.